All-Star friends, this is Mr. Bowen for Mr. Bowen's All-Stars. If this is your first time watching one of my videos, I am a second grade teacher coming, coming back to the classroom after being out of the classroom for a year and a half. Previously, I was in a coaching role, but that role had me traveling to a bunch of different schools all across the state and the amount of travel that was required for that role was just not working for me and my family. So I decided to head back into the classroom because I missed it. And this, I was gi given a chance to teach second grade at this new school district for me. And so I, I chose a new challenge and I chose to take it. Previously, I was a mostly a kindergarten teacher for 11 years. There were some times I was teaching kindergarten and first grade split. So this is my first time actually teaching uh, second grade in a self-contained classroom. So I am, so this is kind of a little bit like starting over for me. If you have not seen any of my videos, I will link the other classroom setup videos in the video description below. This is day seven of my classroom setups and might be my last setup video. Um, the reason being is not because I'm gonna be completely done by the end of this video, but I will have reached a point where it really is not, you're really not gonna see a whole lot of actual big time setup. It's gonna be a lot of planning with curriculum, maybe some adjustments to the schedule, start printing out my materials for the first week of school, and not going to be real entertaining. So I might do another video later of like, showing what I have done as far as like getting ready for the first week of school. But I think this will probably be my last full-fledged classroom setup video. The plan for future videos is to, you know, continue my vlog, show you my journey in my first year back in the classroom in second grade. And also I'm going to record some videos showcasing some of the skills that I have that might be of help to you as a early elementary teacher, uh, especially around the area of phonics and foundational skills. Um, I've developed professional development around those areas and I think I have some videos that I can create for you that would be uh, a help to my subscribers and my viewers. So that will be coming down the pipe later once classroom setup is finished and I have some time outside of my my planning. So for today, what I'm going to do is I am going to print out library labels, get send those to be laminated. I'm going to go through the rest of my supplies that were that I had ordered and have been finally delivered to my classroom. It's a lot of just like actual classroom supplies, markers, uh, pencils, crayons, um, some of my teacher supplies. I'm going to organize my desk and figure out what's gonna happen with the rest of the classroom bins. I'm going to uh, hopefully finalize my writing center, that table, that wooden table that was driving me crazy for so long, what am I going to do with that? Well, that is going to be the writing area that students will be able to get writing supplies from. When it is workshop time, they will have a prompt that if they're if they're one of their centers is the writing center they will go there to get the materials get anything that they need and also i will have a prompt for them to complete um i also plan on putting up my sound wall today that's going to be one of the main things that i do is getting up my sound wall and also putting up some other displays i had a calendar that i ordered that was delivered to me. Don't think I'm actually gonna put that up because um, our school is utilizing what is known as a number corner, which is a mathematics routine that is similar. It's not a, it's not a straight out traditional calendar routine, but all the, we're getting all those materials delivered to us, which is essentially a calendar and a bunch of other displays that go into these routines. So I don't even know if I can use the calendar that I ordered. So I'm gonna wait on that. So it's gonna be a lot of, 
today's video is going to be a lot of like little fine tuning things, a lot of little things, but my sound wall I think is going to be definitely the main thing that I put up today. And depending upon what I get done, this could be my last classroom setup video. But again, I will not stop with the vlogs. I will continue throughout the year. I will show you, I will do just some straight out regular vlogs, just talking about my week. I will do some helpful videos where I will model some teaching. Zachary will probably be my model student uh, with the videos, obviously, because I'm not going to use my real class privacy. And it's gonna be a great year. So we're heading into the classroom and getting right to work. We are here and ready to get to work. Let me turn you around just so you can get one more look at where we are in the classroom right now. And then we'll get right to it. If you've seen the previous videos, you've seen, you would see all this work that has been done to get to this point. This is my whiteboard with all the different displays, my teacher points, student points, my schedule. This is going to be where team points are kept. Voice levels, I'm going to print out some numbers for this today. My birthday display, my bulletin board for the math anchor charts, the alphabet display, I haven't really uh, mentioned these 100% before. These were left from the previous teacher. They are skip counting based on those numbers. There are some math facts, so I put those up here at the math workshop area, and Zachary is enjoying the magnet tiles. So this, was, this happened in one of the videos. I didn't necessarily explain what this is. It's uh, a tub for some rulers, another... Uh, station uh, another center for math facts and dice games and there's some other uh math facts addition and subtraction down here for math workshop my makeshift bulletin board with the supply trays the library with just the sticky note the sticky note labels. I will be printing off some labels today and I'm gonna get some number labels to put on these tubs as well. This will become the writing center. There is my makeshift seating for the library. This mess here which I still got to go through some of stuff here. Some stuff are st some of my supplies are in the cabinets. It's my the beginnings of my word wall. The small group area, which has been organized in the supplies that I do have not been put in the drawers. Decodables back here. My workshop bulletin board with my number display. And my information bulletin board, which will pretty much house like the, the school calendar, any other directory things that I need just for myself as the teacher, my teaching area, and that's what we've got so far. So today, like I said, is going to be a lot of just little things that I find. I know it's nothing new, but it's so good to see you. We do this every day. And I'm still so amazed by you So hold me tight through the night mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's just us two Just really quick, I wanted to shout out these library labels based on genre I've had these labels for quite a long time, but they they mit, they they kind of fit with the spotty brights. It's kind of that neutral black color. So I'm going to use these once again. These come from the Creative Classroom, and I will link those labels 
down below.
sitting by the traffic light zone. I don't know if I should go. I see it in your eyes. Yeah, I can read the signs. I'm sure you could tell from the compilation of <coughs> the time-lapse videos that I compiled a few different days into one, mainly because each day was not a full day. I had very little uh, time to like sort of go through and make it a full day video. And so we're calling the past few days day seven. So I'm going to turn you around because a ton has been done since days since day six. I'll turn you around and you can see all the work that's been done. We'll start right here at the classroom door, the entrance to the classroom. This is part of my sound wall, the Vowel Valley. You can see the mouth cards that shows what the shows the students what to do with their mouths when they make those particular sounds. And over here is the rest of the sound wall, which is the consonants portion of the sound wall. It has all the different types of sound, the stops, the affricates, the fricatives, the two sounds, the liquids, the glides, I don't know <laughs> if I'm gonna keep the H there. It's actually down a little bit farther than I'd like, but I kind of ran out of room, so I'm tr still trying to figure out how I want to put the H. I might may try to move these over just a little bit and see if I can f squeeze the H there. But uh, this came out pretty well. I like the I like this. Um, these are part of our leadership program here at the school. And when I took them down, I did not realize that we need to have these posted. So I put them back up here on my cabinets and it works out just fine. The classroom jobs, my jobs board, I'm going to use some clothespins for each job and have it clip here with their student number on it. And that'll rotate so not everybody has a job throughout the weeks but it'll sort of it'll do a rotation throughout up all the way to the top and then go back into the students that don't have a job over here was one of the things that took one of the longest time uh, longest pieces of time which was the classroom library labels and the stickers so 
if you've seen some of my really old videos, you know that how I make sure that the students are able to self-manage the library and know where to how to put the books back is based on a particular colored uh, sticky dot. You see these in garage sales a lot, but I like using these because they're really e easy to peel off and really easy to manage as opposed to like printing out a bunch of stickers um, from a printer and trying to figure out a system that way. This just feels the best for me. And really all it is is that each, uh, each genre has a particular color or design with that color and each book has a, the same color and students when they go shopping for those books and they put them well sorry about that into their individual book bins when they are done with those books and they want to put them back they return them back to the matching dot and so each one of these has a particular dot colored dot or an x on them if they're if it's the same color so Animals Fiction, I'm not sure how nature got put in the middle between Animals Fiction, but we're just going to move that over so it looks better. There we go. And it's just an easy way to manage the classroom library. And you can see here we have folk tales music and poetry i had another i need to get another little label for poetry on there but folk tales are here i'm still reserving these for hopefully some more chapter some more chapter books like the magic tree house or some of these other type books as soon as i get a hold of those i'll add some labels to these and put the books in there i used my spotty brights numbered dots and didn't realize that the dots were as big as they were and so they kind of ended up being too big for the bins however i don't like to waste and so this is what i'm using for for this year um and it looks okay some of the tape i need to fix some of the tapes on these because some of the labels are starting to come off already Need to get some better tape, I guess. But aside from that, they look pretty good. I still like the pattern of colors, how they're in a pattern. And I still like how they fit with the rest of the decor, my word wall over here. This, you probably just recently saw me mess with this monstrosity. I love this thing. It is super sturdy. And when I saw it on Amazon, I didn't realize how difficult it would be to put together. But after I started figuring it out, it came together. At first it was difficult, but once I figured it out, it started coming together rather easily. So these are going to be my mailboxes. This is not super fancy, but these are just some handmade labels for my three buckets that I use, my turn and bucket, my word work for workshop, and then my extra bucket for whenever, if a student finishes early with something, they should never not have anything to do. They can come over here and grab something from the extra bucket. Turning you around over here to see what I've done over here. I have my, <laughs> Zachary's waving hi. I have my team points laminated here, which I will be able to use my dry erase markers to use tallies for the team points. And again, here is going to show what the voice levels, what voice level is students are able to do for the, whatever portion of the lesson. I still don't have the push push lights, but that'll be the next thing. I'll get some push lights with command strips and put those on here. 
and it uh, I've used this before I've used that particular um, display before and it's very functional and very easy to use um, the birthdays display I believe you've already seen that before so that I believe is everything that has been done oh the other thing I wanted to show you as well which I did is I was able to zip tie the desks together so that they don't come apart easily like they have been doing and I'm sh you also saw me rearrange the the tables into this design because now there is no hole in the middle of the tables they now this is the thing that was confusing me is I was trying to make all of these edge edges line up together to like make to line up like you would think a normal square table would line up but it doesn't work that way so now the tables are in a much better situation one of this one of my the members of my second grade team came in and showed me how they go together one more thing i wanted to share with you before i finish is just an example of the writing center there will be a regular prompt that's going to probably be put in here in one of those plastic sleeves that show the prompt that the students are going to do for workshop time there's a couple different uh a couple different uh primary lined paper here for them to use there are some sticky notes for annotations for using, using those to help with highlighting evidence in their text. There's also some flashcards here for them to use as well as erasers if, if their pencil erasers end up uh, disappearing. So let me go ahead and turn you around so we can finish out this video. So as you can see, um, I still have some work to do. Mostly very, very little things now. I need to put some labels on each of the groups to match the labels on my team points up on the whiteboard here. Um, I have another display that I want to do with how students sign in in the morning to check whether they are here and whether they're going to have hot lunch or cold lunch. And it just helps make uh, me taking attendance, it helps make it work much easier. Um, and then it's really starting to plan with the curriculum. Uh, there are some more supplies that are just gonna be coming in, but again, really not a whole lot, really not much else for you to see. So this, ends my classroom setup series. I really appreciate all the feedback that I've been getting from the other videos. I appreciate everybody taking the time to watch them. And coming up will be more videos that I will continue to do throughout the school year. I will be doing a lot of, I'll be doing some day in the life videos of, of how things are going in my journey back into the classroom. But I will also be recording some other videos sample videos on how to to teach uh, some good some strategies on how to teach those foundational skills and some other classroom management videos so even though my setup videos are done you will see a lot more of me and you will get to see you will continue you get to continue with me in this journey so if you haven't already don't forget to like and subscribe for Mr. Bowen's All-Stars, and we'll see you again real soon.